refined spirit speed. And I am on the windy islands of Scotland again. This time it's the Southern Islands tour. And I'm starting off with the Isle of Arran. And the Isle of Arran distilleries or distillers built their second distillery here in the south of Arran and it's called the Lag Distillery. It actually has been a Lag Distillery before. It was 18 something and it was illegal, never thing written anything down and illegally sold to the Scottish mainland. And yeah, it had to close in about 1840. Maybe that's the only record, the criminal record when they closed it down, I don't know. And yeah, they rebuilt or built a new distillery, the Lag Distillery in 2017 and opened it in 2019. And in 2022, they actually released the first whiskey. If you look at the distillery, it has a very distinctive contour or shape. And on the very uh, left side of your picture, there's a, um, a very steep um, island, the Isla Craig in the mist, uh, clouded in the mist. And if you are on the Isla Craig and you look towards Aran, you see a distinctive shape of mountains on Isle of Aran. And this is the same shape as you have with the distilleries that you see here. So maybe I can do a drone footage there, and maybe I can't because it's really windy and really a bit cloudy for the, for the mountains. Uh, yeah, we'll see. And yeah, let's continue. The Isle of Aran has 4,600 inhabitants and it's really a small island. It has, um, uh, yeah, there are some puffins on the island. There are seals. It's a very nice island. But today we are here for the whiskey of the Lag Distillery. So let's go in and see how the whiskey is made. Let's talk about the water. They have a borehole on site 110 meters deep. It's, I don't know, 350 feet or something like that. And uh, yeah, they get fresh, clear water from the Isle of Aran. But you're probably more interested in this ingredient here. That is the peat. Uh, the idea of the distillery came from the Machri Moor, from the Lohranza distillery, which was the only peated whiskey they had here at the north of the Isle of Aran. And they had a 20 ppm whiskey and it was really doing well. So the Isle of Aran distilleries Distillers thought about building another distillery here at Lag, and now they're actually doing a bit more ppm here at Lag, and that's 50 ppm. Currently they're doing 30, but they did 50 quite a long time. They're doing a few variations, so they have a bit more, yeah, more, more stuff to blend in the end to create more different kind of whiskies, which that's pretty cool. But uh, the level of 50 or 30 ppm is not the only thing that is a very distinctive for the Lag distillery and that is it is an island distillery the Isle of Aran is an island but they're not using the peat from the Isle of Aran but they're actually using peat from the highlands near Aberdeen and the highlands peat is different to the islands peat and that is the the islands peat has a lot of iodine a lot of uh, salt and it makes a really medicinal character whereas here at Lag they use the highland peat that is more woody, grassy, flowery. And that's what they're looking to add as the first flavor within their ingredient of malt. Next thing is the mash tun, filling four tons of grist with 16,000 liters of water. And what they also do is they have a lot of the rake system. So you rake it quite a lot, it gets turned, and that has a different, um, makes a different kind of wart than you have when you have slow raking or no raking and you call it a, a cloudy wart. A cloudy wart also gives you more of a grassy flavor, more of an oily flavor. So that's what you're actually looking for and that's the second flavor they're adding. Also grassy so you have more grassy flowery woody here and more grassy from the mash tun. Let's have a look how the next stages actually affect the flavors. Behind me you see the wash bags. There are four of them and if you count correctly you see five. The last one that doesn't have a switcher blade, one of these motors on top, that is actually the wash charger, which is the one that has the measuring device in it. Usually distilleries do a, a stainless steel wash charger, but they went with the classic wooden wash charger, which um, is pretty cool. And they fill them with um, 20,000 liters and they have two different kinds of yeast. So the first yeast is um, kind of a fast yeast, alcohol and stuff. 
and the second yeast uh, actually survives in there and gives them a bit more flavors. They're looking at about, about on average 78 hours of fermentation and 8% eight hour, uh, 8 of alcohol and the duration is pretty yeah, important for the flavors that are being created and with 78 hours they are a bit more on the, the longer fermentation duration side which also gives them a grassy character. So we had a lot of grassy uh, with the ingredients and the mash tun and now we're also going for grassy and with these 8% we are off to the distillation. I'm at the heart of the distillery, the stills. Yeah, we have the wash still, 10,000 liters of capacity. Then we have the spirit still with uh, 7,000 liters capacity. They fill it at about 6,500 capacity. And it's a fairly new distillery, but they still left a bit of space in here so they can actually double their capacity with two new stills and four new washbacks, which is pretty nice. But they did it like uh, so they can have it side by side but that meant they have to have two different spirit safes which is well, it's okay and what they also have they have a lot of manual labor they have uh, all the turning valves for the steam are turned by hand you have all the measuring done with val um, vials with glass vials where you measure the density and also switch the four shots and hard piece with a manual lever, so it's pretty nice. But still, they are not um, inefficient with that. They you can be really efficient with that. They have an energy conservation system where you come up with 50 uh, degrees water and you put it in, in through the steam and it just takes a bit of energy out of the steam and sends the water off to the uh, tanks with 90 degrees of Celsius. So that really takes all the energy that is usually wasted and puts it back into the system. No waste, which means, yeah, better for the planet. Yeah. But let's look at the, the flavors here. You have a bit of a squatted, they're a bit wider, not as tall, the line arm is falling. So everything that comes to the top goes back, uh, goes into the whiskey. So all the flavors are, is really easy for them to be distilled and end up in the whiskey. So that gives you more of a, an oily whiskey. All the grassy flavors are not distilled out, so they're in the whiskey. And what they also say, they have a lot of texture in here. So I got a bit of raw spirit. Let's let's have a try. Mmm. Mmm. Oh. Very smoky. Very smoky with a, a bonfire of smoke. But also oily, yes, grassy, earthy tones. No, really. Uh, um, very intense strong kind of spirit mm, i like it and yeah let's find out what you can do with this spirit if you actually put it in a cask this here is the warehouse and they actually do the cask filling and the vatting here on site to assure continuity and quality and in terms of casks behind me you see the lack cask society these were the people who bought the cask before the distillery was even standing and after 10 years, they get their, or 10 years after the first filling of the cask, they get their whiskey. And they also get one of the battles of the first cask filled, which is a pretty big honor. And it's also pretty nice because a lot of distilleries have their first cask standing somewhere for ages and it will never be bottled. They said, we are bottling it after 10 years. Yeah, in terms of maturation here, you have 90% bourbon casks, 75% uh, of the bourbon casks are first fill bourbon casks, so really nice quality. Some of them, 25% of these 90% are um, second fill, so well, pretty nice as well. And they have a lot of experiments and a lot of other casks going on as well. They have sherry casks, wine, sauterne wine, uh, they have um, cognac, they have a good cooperation with uh, rum distilleries, also with the plantation uh, distillery. So nice rum casks and rum finishes are, are coming up. And then they have uh, thinking about mezcal calvados. So pretty hard to get. So some of them they probably have gotten already, but mm, some of them they're still searching. Also in cask sizes, they vary a lot. They have big sherry casks and also they're going down to quarter casks. They have a good amount of quarter casks already in there, but also they're going down to firkins. Firkins uh, used to be in the beer industry, so perfect for transporting back in the days on 
I don't know, mules or donkeys or horses because they are just 50 liters, very small casks. And now they're using them, special order from the Speyside Cooperage. And yeah, they are pretty small, so they have a lot of uh, wood to um, spirit ratio, so they mature really, really fast. I'm really looking forward to, to seeing all these spirits, really how they turn out. So um, I'm gonna have a little interview and try all of their whiskey they have right now. So yeah, this was the production and I'm sitting here with Graham Omart. You have 13 years of experience in the whiskey industry and uh, yeah, you've been raised on Isla, so a true Islander. Yeah, thank you very much for having us here. Uh, thank you very much for um, being here with us on this beautiful day today and being yeah. able to taste the lovely, the lovely whiskey. Yeah, thank <laughs> you very much for showing us around and, and telling me everything that I, I've shown on camera. So um, you were 10 years at La Franza? Yes, I started in La Carranza when I was 22, mm -hmm. uh, quite fresh faced, fresh out of uh, college. And um, I was immediately thrown straight into the um, stills. Mm -hmm. So I was a mashman, stillman operator from day one. And um, because I was young and uh, fit, I could uh, do a lot of night shifts. So that was immediately what I started doing. <laughs> so just, just throw the young people into the coal mine. <laughs> but I thoroughly enjoyed it. But you've now uh, become distillery manager and master distiller here at uh, LAG. Yes, I did. Uh, so you're three, for here for three years, but the very interesting thing is how is the setting up of the distillery? How was that? Well, I can tell you one thing. There's a lot of romantic parts about, make, about helping set up a new distillery. And there are a lot of parts that, you know, you don't like to talk about in celebration because there are some, I mean, the, the, the actual chance to be able to be on the ground floor at a brand new distillery it's a dream. Mm -hmm. Not many people can ever say that I was there day one. I was there day zero. Mm -hmm. it's, so I was here when the stills were being put in. I was here when the contractors were here talking about the pipework, how this is going to work. I helped them set up the design for how to organize things going where and how I would like the temperature settings to be like that. All that was done in situ with myself. And just, I didn't, I, 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 I wasn't, I didn't take over from someone else. I, I, I was able to set those ground rules mm -hmm. as the place was being built. So just, Getting the opportunity was just amazing. Okay. And um, I will say though that um, the big issues that we probably had for sitting up here, I mean, it's not, most places won't have these problems, but simply because we're so remote and on an island, that always has these little issues like you've got weather, you've got transportation, logistics, you know, things can drag on a wee bit and um, suddenly uh, time scales are months, months, months later. Oh. And it was like, um, come on, we want some whiskey, we want, we're, we're dying of thirst here. <laughs> Yeah, so so it's 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 really nice. I've I've seen the whole place. It's such a nice place. But we're interested in actually your product. So so what are we having today? Well, I've got a wee selection here. Um, I've got some from the initial inaugural release, mm -hmm. which is um, sold out pretty much all over the world. You can still get some here on on Aaron, but it's very very difficult to find. So this is the inaugural batch one, which was our very first release of whiskey for Lag. So I'll just very first now, oh, nice. <laughs> very first official release of lag. So I hope a few people were able to save a few bottles for their collection. Mm -hmm. And you started off with 50 ppm, you said? Yes, 50 ppm was, is, well, is the standard for lag distillery. We've played around with some ppm as we mm -hmm. went, but um, 50 is the, was our starting point. Mm -hmm. um, it's going to be our comparison from that point onwards. Mm -hmm. So obviously, three years old. Three years old. This was about three years and a couple of days old. We couple were, of days. We, okay. were, we were counting the minutes to put out and send it away for bottling. <laughs> <laughs> and is it is it a bourbon? It's all bourbon. This is all first of all bourbon. This right. is um, mm -hmm. from Buffalo Trace bourbon casks as well. Okay. Oh. Yeah, it's strange to to have this as an island malt, no. and a PT, a PT island malt. And it's not that phenolic, medicinal that you know from <laughs> the island next door. It, it's not a coastal peat, that's what I will say. It's, it's, it's amazing. We're specializing more in what we usually, what we actually have here is um, a whiskey that was, um, the, the peat that was used was more from a highland mm -hmm. moss style inland peat, not coastal peat. So it doesn't have that same medicinal elements. Instead it has more of that grass heather notes to it. Yeah, it's strange because you have that, that freshness of the grass, a bit of the floweriness going on there. So it does have freshness, but not on the medicinal side because the medicinal would be fresh as well, but 
This is a, a mixture between a, a grassy, fresh one with a, a bit of a bonfire, I would say, something like that, or a charcoal, I don't know. It, it, it's definitely interesting, I love it. Yeah. So, yeah, slanje. Slanje. Mmm. Mm. Mm. Oh, I did have the not the spirit, but oh, the cask ass adds just much more to it. Mm. And th but this is cask strength, isn't it? Yes, no, this is fifty percent. Fifty, okay. okay. Yeah, I, I was saying if, if that's forty three or forty six, then <laughs> you got a hefty spirit. Yeah, but it, it's also it's quite rough. Yeah, it's, it's, it shows its age, doesn't it? I mean, you're not, you're not going to drink a three-year-old whiskey and expect it to be a, the equivalent of a 16-year-old. That's but what people will think. Also, kind of, um, I, I know now what, what you say with, with uh, what you told me with texture and oiliness. Uh, definitely an oily spirit. Mm -hmm. And with rough, I mean, you, if you look at the stills, you have that, that very, it's just, it evaporates and it's gone. <laughs> yes, we, we don't encourage too much reflux mm -hmm. at the distillery. We try to encourage a lot more of those hev heavily sulfured notes mm -hmm. into the spirit. The things that will carry over that kind of roughness of the flavour. Mm -hmm. But it's not all bad. It, 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 it gives a bit of fire, but it also gives a lot more of the flavour and the texture that we're looking for. And it helps drive those grassy texturing notes that we mm -hmm. want in the spirit. Mm -hmm. I, I did have a few Lohranza, uh, so this is very far from that. <laughs> so is that kind of like the point that you have like a bit of a dichotomy, like like Lohranza easy and this one is, is tough? Yeah, well, we, we were always kind of the dirtier sister, I think we kind of looked ourselves <laughs> as. <laughs> yeah. It was always an old sort of saying that, you know, lag digs deeper, it was going to be the peated, it was going to be the, the, the more earthy, the darker version of Lohranza. Mm -hmm. mm. One question, even though uh, it will be probably a question for Lohanza Distillery, what's the future of uh, Machri Moor? Is that going to be continued or is that going to be integrated here at LAG or how, how is that going? Well, Machri Moor is exclusively a Lohanza product. That is what we've always said from day one. Uh, Lohanza did actually end its production of peated malt a few years ago, back in 2017. I, I was actually on shift when it happened, because I, I, was, I was working from 2011 to 2017 was where the bulk of the Macri Moor that people are enjoying today was created. Mm -hmm. So once, uh, once it was established what lag was going to be that was going to take the, the peated malt away from Locranza as a full responsibility, because a lot of people don't understand this, it is very, very <laughs> difficult to actually run a peated and a non-peated distillery at the same time. There's a lot of changes that need mm -hmm. to happen. A lot of cleaning needs to be done. Um, and it, it, it just adds a lot of headaches. So where Loch Ranza yeah. made it say, kind of, it's ground as a non-peated distillery, though people do love the Macri Moor. What we want to do at LAG is we're going to take that responsibility away from Loch Ranza. And Loch Ranza will still have, there'll be plenty of Macri Moor to go around for many, many years to come. So don't mm -hmm. worry about that. So Loch Ranza's got a nice big stockpile of their own peated whiskey. And they will run through it. And by the time that finishes, Lag should have its own established brand as the peated malt and Aaron. So we can enjoy it for like a decade and then it slowly yeah, fades out. You can out. enjoy it for quite a number of years and it yeah. will slowly, you'll start, you'll start noticing that the releases will get maybe thinner, there won't be as many in a year until eventually mm. you'll probably suddenly get a, this is your final chance to own, the, <laughs> own a piece of history. And okay. hopefully, or hopefully the sister will be able to take over mm -hmm. from the, the legacy that was the Macri Moor. Yeah, I do like it. Uh, it, it was also great. So um, what is th that was actually a, a user question from YouTube. So if you have any questions, just write them down in the comments below. So the next one is going to be one of your core ranges. So the other one was inaugural at the beginning and now yes. we're going for, but is this out yet? Not quite, no. no it, okay. It's not out yet. A bit. I'm not sure when this is going live, but this should be out on the shelves for about the end of May, I believe. Mm -hmm. So you can expect to look for it then. This is going to be our very, very first release of, from our core range. So this will be one that, hope, unlike the inaugural, which I know a lot of people had trouble getting because of the rarity of it, this one should be much more available. So uh, I think with editing, May should be around when you watch it. Okay, <laughs> I hope you've got both in your hand. <laughs> <laughs> so this is the, currently right now, this is cast strength. Oh. So mm -hmm. yes, this is, but um, it will be released at 46%. So I think as a wee bit of a change, we can try it 
a young one with cask strength is a bit yeah. heftier than, <laughs> than... And then we'll, we'll add quite a few drops of water and then that will, that will give you an idea of what the Kilmori will be like at release. Mm -hmm. So this is also bourbon cask? This is 100% first row bourbon. First yes. row, okay. Oh, mm -hmm. this is a bit more bourbon than... Uh, there, there's a bit more bourbon flavour in there as well. Yeah, there was a, there was a bit of a change. The, 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 reason, the, the Kilmori, although in recipe terms, will seem similar to the inaugural, there is a slight difference because the inaugural was from the very first few weeks of production. So that was us finding our, our feet, so to speak. Mm -hmm. So I had a bit more of an experimental edge to it. Mm -hmm. But the Kilmori is the, will be the more consistent style product mm -hmm. that will be released going forward. Oh, okay, nice. Mm -hmm. I, I, I love the, the, the idea of or the, your numbers that you gave me that you have 250 liters in the first year and 550 in, in, in like the second and third. So I, that, is quite, that is quite astonishing. We've gone from strength to strength very, very quickly. And, and isn't that like during the, the like lockdown years and something like that? So lockdown never, never slowed us down. We, we had to stop for about a month because okay. it, was, it was expected during, during the height of lockdown that um, we do live in an island and there was a lot of issues of people worried that we would be bringing holly or you know, malt and yeast to the island and mm. just because because it was such a and I think a lot of people forget that there was a lot of panic when yeah. COVID really began it was, it was so many it was a few years ago but the idea that there were people that were so concerned that if you, if you bring outsiders to a small community that mm. it could cause a big problem and so many people could be hurt so we for the first month to two months we thought we'll stop production We'll allow things to settle down and then mm. we'll see how things go. And luckily, yeah. there's not so much hysteria, but people started to be a bit more relaxed about the idea of, okay, maybe some people can go back to work now. Yeah. And that's when, we, that's when we started back up again. And we've, been, mm. no, we've never stopped since, to be honest. Yeah, you, you, <laughs> you've done a really good production side. And, but quality-wise, I was also astonished. Uh, it, but it's, I think having a, a heftier, spicier, oilier spirit is a bit easier to start with when you have younger whiskies. <laughs> it's not a cheat, don't worry. <laughs> but I'm, I'm really excited about how that turns out when you have an older whiskey because you should take a bit of the edges off, but still remain, hopefully remain with the spiciness and smokiness. Yes. The, the, the spiciness and smokiness is very, very, is very important. Well, Grand has got a spicy edge to it too, but we, we really carved out our own niche here, I believe, in comparison. Mmm. Mmm. It's a burst of bourbon flavor. Mmm. And that strong peat. Mm. Much sweeter. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, there's a sweetness too. But still, you have like 10, 11, 11 ABV more that yeah. is. Mm -hmm. So, this is why I would highly recommend for this one just a couple of drops, and that mm -hmm. will take us down closer to what the actual release will be in the bottle. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, because I'm not on the shelf yet, I, 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 I would love to have a nice big um, Kilmory box here, but <laughs> so the, the, it's, it's, st it's, still, it's still getting bottled, unfortunately. Production is faster than marketing with yep. a label. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so, uh, what is it? Kilmory. Kilmory. And, and where's the name? Well, Kil well, Kilmory is how people pronounce it, Kilmory. Mm -hmm. uh, it's it's the, just a village over. It's only about half a mile down the road. Oh, okay. So, Lag and Kilmory are just two small villages in the south end right next to each other. Mm -hmm. This is Lag. And Kilmori's our, our neighbour. Oh, okay, nice. Ooh, that opens it up quite a lot and it makes it even smokier. Yeah. <laughs> One thing I've noticed, the addition of water to our whiskey always seems to bring out the, the, the peat. It seems to be hiding yeah. almost. As soon as you add a little bit of water, it's kind of it's, puffing. It's, it's, it's counterintuitive. Are you, are you diluting it and less smoky? But <laughs> <laughs> mm. 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 And much more sweetness. Yep. Oh, I love that. Mm. That full bourbon flavour. Yeah, still, for me, that grassiness is always, I think it's a bit of hay in there. I stayed at the, um, at the farm yesterday, and that <laughs> really reminds me a bit about that <laughs> straw and hay that we have in the barn. It's, <laughs> it, it's, it's, a, it's very indicative of the area we're in. We are in the farmland of Aaron, so mm -hmm. if, it, if it gives off that kind of film, um, flavor probably thanks to the maturation mm -hmm. then so be it it's all for the better mm -hmm. yeah i love the whole concept about your distillery that you mm -hmm. have uh you have a bit of a feel there you know <laughs> the apples going on and and the distillery and, and the lovely view and the tul what is it tulips or i don't know and and heather and something yes. planted up there of course heather we get everything in the I, so i can highly recommend it if you come to the isle of Ireland, go to lag it's just 
beautiful site. Yeah, it's it's yeah. in the middle of nowhere, but when, you, when mm -hmm. you come here, you will never regret it. It's got some of the best views on the whole island. Yeah, and actually, if you can get the ferry uh, <laughs> over from, from, from near Glasgow, it's actually not that far. <laughs> no, it's, it's not at all. From the centre of Glasgow, from the centre of Scotland, it's so easy to get to Arden. It's one of the reasons why it's such a popular destination. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like it. So, a bit of a more of a tough question. So, there was a rumour at the beginning that you are doing spirit blending between peated and unpeated malt. Is that true or is that uh, not true? That's from uh, T. Herman. Well, T. Herman, I will say to you that your sources are correct. <laughs> the the, the rumour is true. Uh, a few years ago, just um, when we came out of lockdown, mm -hmm. we had an epiphany. In fact, one of our sales reps had an epiphany that um, we should do something a bit more, a bit more lively, something, something a bit unusual with mm -hmm. our whisky, because we are sister distilleries, mm -hmm. and so we always want to have make sure that both distilleries are kind of one, in, no, not one in the same, but they're connected. There's a, there's a connection mm -hmm. between the two. And so what we did was we took 5,000 litres of fresh new make spirit from Lag and 5,000 fresh from La Carranza. We put them in a big vatting tank, this is before it even hit a cask, mm -hmm. and then mixed them together thoroughly, 50-50, and then cast bourbons and sherries e equally with them. And this was such a monumentally unusual idea that we thought this is a great thing we can just keep doing every year. So from, now, so from every year since 2020, we have been taking 5,000 litres of one and the other, mix them together before they've hit any wood and then cast them into anything we can get our hands on. Okay, so but you're one company and two distilleries, so yes. what does the SWA say about that? Well, they, they, they were, it's not something that happens very often. Quite often okay. it's, it's done more towards the, towards the end of the life rather than actual at birth, as it's known mm -hmm. as. Uh, so it, it, they called it a blended, I believe it was a blended Scotch whiskey, I think a blended, blended, blended malt, malt then. Blended malt, yeah. Because you're both, both malt? Yeah, then you both can malt. Go. Blended malt was how it was described by SWA, and it's perfectly legal, perfectly allowed. Mm -hmm. It's just very unusual. And uh, right now it hasn't really got a proper name, so we've kind of called it because of where we are. Yeah, Project, blend, Project blend, North and South. Blend, <laughs> blended malt is, is yeah. probably, it, it must be that. You can't call it single, but yeah. you have it's to not single, it. but it, it's malt, yeah. but it's, it's a blend. Yeah, and, and, and pretty much everybody knows now that it's La and, and yeah. like So I, I thought about, like, you did a bit of unpeated, but you're only doing peated. We're only doing peated down here, but we, oh. well, that, that was, if we have done some experimentation, we actually have done a very, very small batch of unpeated at lag. <laughs> So that's something for the future, because we kind of compact. Well, it's more to fulfill my own curiosity <laughs> than anything, because um, I had a bit of a, I, I could do a bit of playfulness down here. So I've done unpeated, I've done mm -hmm. 15 ppm, I've done 20, 25, 35, 30, and um, 50. And we've also done 90 ppm, but that was very, very rare. We did a very, very small batch of uh, Aaron, malt, Aaron malted barley at 90 ppm, and it was fascinating. Oh, that, you, you have done so many PPM levels, so, so that is going to be a, a nightmare for bookkeeping. No. <laughs> I've, got, I've got a nice big spreadsheet, I'm keeping track of it all. <laughs> <laughs> but it's going to be probably something really exciting for blending then. Absolutely, yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. This, I, I, I'm really excited about how this whole thing is going, going to the future. <laughs> what we're going to do and like sit here in, in 10 years and then like tons of, of different cars, tons of different BPMs. So something I've always learned is that you can never do wrong by having a bit of uh, a bit of a wide kind of catalogue of spirit. Mm -hmm. I mean, you got, um, a lot of distilleries just have straight up their, their, their usual product, straight into bourbon. We'll do that whole year. Maybe do a bit of a finish here or there. Mm -hmm. I like the idea of having a nice kind of wide catalogue, things that we can pick from here or there. We do a si single cash release. That's something unusual there, here or there. Adds a bit of flavour to the whole profile. Mm -hmm. Nice, nice. And the last one here in our, our group of three is a bit dark. Yeah, and, <laughs> and it's only three years old, I can promise you that. <laughs> so, this is the Cory Cravey, soon to be Cory Cravey. It's um, not quite finished just yet, so actually you've still got two more months of maturation to go. Mm -hmm. But this is the very first sneak peek of the Cory Cravey. Corrie Cravey. It's not mm -hmm. ready. It'll be ready very shortly. It'll be away for bottling and should be on the shelves probably for about July, August, I believe. Okay. So I need to double check on that, but it'll be still, still a few more so months away. So summer, summertime. Summertime, yes. <laughs> it's, it's still resting. It's still getting its full flavour, but this is a nice mm -hmm. wee sneak peek at it just for you. So Cory Cravey is like that, right? Well, Cory Cravey is a, ha <laughs> is a hamlet that way. It's about a mile down the road. Okay. And we're, we're, we're in good terms of Cory Cravey because it's where the local fire station is. So if we're ever in trouble, <laughs> we, just, we give them, just give them a shout. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's, oh yeah, that has a great what is that, amber or something. So this is um, this has been finished for currently four months in Oloroso okay. sherry casks. Hmm.
Oler also shared it. Oler also shared it. Oh, I love this. They were supplied by Miguel Martin. Mm-hmm. So, damn good quality. There, there are hardly any like Highland malts with that kind of peat that have 50 ppm. Mm-hmm. Can't think of any right now at the top of my head. There are probably some, but... Yeah, but particularly some that use us a Highland style peat. Mm-hmm. It's an unusual one. We, we, we need to try to carve out a niche. We could have just gone the same route as an Isla malt, mm-hmm. coastal peat, heavy ppm, high mm-hmm. phenols, high medicinal. No. That was already a very saturated market. We wanted to make something that was uniquely that Aaron. Is, that is really different. <laughs> I like it. And and this this nuttiness, the dried fruits that come out pretty quickly with that Oloroso. So you said it was a Oloroso finish or whole Oloroso? Finish. It was, finish. Um, yes, so it spent uh, two and a half years, in, well, just, just two, two and three quarter years now mm-hmm. in bourbon and about four months in uh, sherry Oloroso. So okay. it's still got another two months to go. We, we wanted to give it a full six month maturation. Six months, yeah, that, that is good. <laughs> but that really leaves a mark like in. Mm-hmm. in, in four months. The, the times that we've experimented with our spirit and sherry, we've always had really good results. Mm-hmm. It just seems that the, the heavily peated, kind of sweet peat, sherry, sweet peat whiskey we have just seems to marry so well with sherry casks. But I really love that the, the it's a really exciting whiskey. I think you can, with that one, you can really play in the top league now because of, <laughs> <laughs> because, okay, yeah, it's a young one. Yeah, it's a young one. But still, you have that peatiness, you have the oily spiciness, heaviness, and you, the olor also. That, there's just a lot going on in that whiskey. Mm. Shall we? Slange it. Slange it. Mm. 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 58.8, yeah. yeah. Mm. <laughs> I do love it, yeah. It's, um, it's only just slightly stronger than what will be in the bottle. It'll be a 55% release. But this is, this is more of a, a, there's a glowing touch to it like that. Bonfire still burning. Yeah. It's, <laughs> it's, it's not, yeah, it, it's, it's a warmth. It's not so much of a fire. It's just mm-hmm. a, a warmth that caresses you as it goes down. Flavor stays with you. Yeah, but it stays in, as a glowing in, in your mouth and, the, mm-hmm. and that sweetness is going on. I, I, I didn't expect the sweetness. Because uh, probably because of, of all the 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 spiciness, you you expect that the sweetness goes down, but that doesn't have to be. Here you have sweetness and spiciness. Mm. Mm-hmm. Oh. Once again, as you add water, you should get more of that peat coming forth. Yeah, it's a bit, bit more direct. The other one was a bit more smoldering, but this mm-hmm. is now more more of a really a, a cloud of smoke. Mm. Kind of, a big, mm. kind of a big puff releasing from this. From the <laughs> mm. 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 Oh, so delicious, I almost want to chew it. <laughs> mm. But it just leaves that, that, co- that kind of coated oily texture, which is kind of common of our spirit. It just clings to the tongue, to your mouth, and delivers mm. all that flavour. Yeah, it's strange, but you realise that there is experience behind that. Even though you are young, you... <laughs> <laughs> And um, is a new distillery. You, you already have that feeling of a uh, of a scotch yeah. that is is not as harsh as as other whiskies or other spirits. Yeah, you you, you we know we see that you have experience from Lachlan's already. Yeah. Well, I, I was given a lot of free reign with the spirit here. Mm-hmm. I worked with James McTaggart, who was the distillery manager of Lachlan's, a titan in the industry. Who I'm sure a lot of people have mm-hmm. much of love for, and. Between me and him, we spent two weeks developing the spirit. Mm-hmm. Um, well, we, we wanted to create a spirit that would stand on its own. Mm-hmm. And we knew then if we could do that, then the maturation would just be a bonus later on. Mm-hmm. So, it's, so as long as you have a good solid base, a good spirit that you can be proud of, everything else is just a bonus afterwards. And that was the kind of philosophy I went on with him. So, so you're still a lot of in touch with him, like, yes, uh, like, like a monthly meeting? Well, or? We're, we're both Isla natives, so I, do get in, I stay in touch with him very, very often. Yes, don't worry about that. He, he has retired now from the industry. So, oh, okay. yeah, yeah he's, um, he, he, he had a long deserved retirement. The man had been working for far, far too long, and now he can stay at home and relax <laughs> for once, play a bit of golf. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, so uh, really great. I, I'm really looking forward to, to having these on the market because I, I think they would be. Uh, very, very uh, beloved whiskies in the future. And yeah, thank you very much for having us here at the distillery. Thank you for coming and thank you for, in, for trying the whiskey. It's always an honor to get people so big in the industry to come and have a wee try. And I'm glad you came all this way to see us.
Yeah, appreciate it. So yeah, thank you very much for watching and feel free if you like this video to share it with your friends. And if you live in the Netherlands, you might uh, have a look at whiskey.com and you might find these bottles here in the future. And thank you very much for watching and see you next time. Mm -hmm.